Hell, I uh, still don't have my regular camera. We had flooding here, if you haven't seen my other videos talking about it recently, uh, in, in my church office. So I currently am recording in my car because I have no camera or office or anything like that. I'm just going other places to find stuff, uh, ways to get stuff done. So, uh, But I wanted to make a, a comment about um, Jordan Peterson, and he seems to have been like a big topic for um, you know a lot of people recently, and I keep getting requests to talk about him more and more. I, I did a podcast that I did have a video of um, that I posted on here if you want to check that out. It was more of a... Actually, I was really talking more about Ben Shapiro than Jordan Peterson, but it's from an interview that they did on the Rubin Report. Anyway, uh, with all that aside, um, one of the things I just wanted to to mention real quick is that there have been some accusations about Jordan Peterson that he is a postmodernist and, and that he, um, you know, people like Jordan Peterson because he's arguing against postmodernism. And uh, some people have said that he really is a postmodernist because of the way he interprets scripture. Um, now, I want to correct that. And, you know, I'm no a big apologist for Jordan Peterson. I've had plenty to be critical of. Um but I think he's valuable in some ways, not so much in other ways, um, just like anybody is, really. Uh, but if you look at his lectures on, on the Bible and some of the things that he said about Christianity, and I just keep getting sent clips from different people of some of the stuff that he's had to say who want me to respond. Um, and what he's doing when he's reading the Bible is that he, he definitely is not reading it in the sense that a, an Orthodox Christian would, would understand Scripture. Uh, when he reads claims about things like hell, uh, for example, he talks about the hell that we make on this earth. He could talk about death and resurrection as kind of a pattern of what happens to us in our life. Um, and what he does is really psychologize the words of Scripture. And so he doesn't really interpret them theologically or historically. Um, he interprets them as these various psychological and philosophical truths. Um, and, and so he reads scripture kind of as, in, in kind of an allegorical sense, you might want to say, um, though I'm not sure technically if it would fit into the, the definition of what, what allegory is or allegorical interpretation. Um, but, but it's, it's not a strict literal historical sense, uh, of, of scripture that he, that he's speaking of. And he doesn't really claim to be a Christian either, but he claims to have influence, you know, from the Bible, uh, as, as, a, as one of the foundations of, of Western culture. Um, and certain things like he won't deny that Jesus rose from the dead literally he won't say that he did either though um, so he doesn't really take a strong stance one way or the other on, on things like that um, but one of the criticisms that, that I've heard is that because he psychologizes the Bible what he's doing is taking a postmodern reading of scripture and so as much as he's critical of postmodernism he's actually using postmodernism in his interpretation of scripture and I want to correct that and say that's not really accurate w what he is doing is here, well, what do you mean by postmodernism, I guess, is the, is the first question, because postmodernism is, is probably a broader movement than we could give it credit for. But um, when we're talking about postmodern readings of, of texts, um, we're going back to Jacques Derrida and his approach uh, to things like deconstruction, finding binary oppositions in texts, and things like that. And, and one of the things that, that um, postmodernism does is it questions uh, who really is the one who gives some kind of interpre authoritative interpretation to the text. And so what developed out of that is, is a kind of reader-oriented criticism, is, is what it's, it's sometimes called, where it is a kind of subjective reading, where it's not only the authorial intent that really matters, uh, nor is it just the literal words of the meaning on the page, uh, but the reader, him, him or herself, actually creates the meaning in, in the text. And so a postmodern way of reading text would be that the reader can read things into the text and can read uh, meaning into the text because they're just as much an authoritative source as the original author in the first place anyway, because what, what really defines meaning in a text? Uh, and it's those kinds of questions that really drive postmodern interpretations of texts. Um, and that's not really what Jordan Peterson is doing when he is, is interpreting scriptures in the way he does. Um, and, and he's made... You know, he hasn't been silent about the fact that Carl Jung is his, his uh, one of his main um, one of his main influences ideologically, uh, one of the founders of modern psychology, uh, coming after Sigmund Freud. And 
Jung does this with his own interpretations of text, so he tries to kind of psychologize things. Now, the goal of this isn't to say, then, when Peterson's interpreting the Bible and other things in this way, he's not saying that these texts are purely subjective and we can interpret them however we want, and because he's a psychologist, he decides to use a psychological interpretive uh, grid that he's just imposed on the text. That's not what he's trying to say. What he is doing, though, is saying that there are deeply embedded psychological conceptions in the mind of the authors and in the text itself. So it's not pure subjectivity, is, is the point. So he's drawing the stuff out of the text, um, and he is reading the text in this kind of allegorical-ish way, um, and, and not definitely not reading it in a, in a Christological, kind of historic Orthodox Christian sense at all. Um, but at the same time, we have to be careful about labeling that as postmodern, because that's just not really accurate to what postmodern literary criticism is. Um, I think that modernism definitely leads to uh, postmodern literary criticism, um, but we can't say they're the same thing. Um, what I would say is that I think Peterson's right in his criticisms of things like Marxism and postmodernism, uh, but I don't think he's gone back far enough, because what we have to do is find really where the big ideological break is uh, in, in the West, and it goes way farther back than the rise of postmodernism or Karl Marx or or Hegel, who Karl Marx draws on in his own his own philosophy, uh, and I think it really goes back to the rejection of of Aristotle, the rejection of Plato, the re the rejection of just uh, the idea of teleology that everything is working toward a specific end or a specific goal. So this uh, goal orientedness of of reality, um, which as Christians obviously we interpret as all things come from God and flow back to Him, go back to Him, and this has been replaced by a kind of mechanistic view of the universe. Um, so what I would say about Peter. Peterson is, again, he's, he's writing a lot of his criticisms, and he's got some practical wisdom psychologically and, and some wisdom for men and how they behave themselves and things like that. Um, but if you're, you're using him as some kind of arch critic of, of the way that culture has gone today, I'd say that he really hasn't gone back far enough. He's just gone back to modernism, uh, which has some of its a lot of its own problems, and, and we really need to go back uh, a lot farther than that. So those are my thoughts uh, for whatever they're worth. If you want to hear more uh, from me, like this video, uh, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time. God bless.